And today we're looking at the secret to finding love. Well, sparks can fly or not on the first date. So matchmaker Paul Carrick Brunson and body language expert Susan Constantine teamed up to share the do's and don'ts of dating and landing the one, as they say. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Well, I guess uh, they call you Mr. Modern Day Hitch, yes. so appropriately <laughs> enough. Um, two quick tips on how people can make a love connection. Tip number one, be as intentional about your love life as you are about work, right? Okay. Start choosing who and what you want, opposed to being chosen, right? That's number one. Number two is expand your social circle. That's where all opportunities come from, business as well as romantic. Okay, so uh, Paul, you matched a couple of 30-somethings here in New York, Shigay and Saquon, mm -hmm. who went on their first date over the weekend. Let's see if they made a love connection. <laughs> Fine. You know you're cute. I specifically asked for an unattractive woman. Too. This is ridiculous. You know, I guess you gotta make this work. Yeah. But you've been to this park before, right? Like one of those urban myths that you go on the first date. Yeah. And you walk through a park, and then you like magically become boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, that's the movie. Yeah. That opening line. I tell you what, it was it was he's nervous. He's All very right? nervous. He's nervous, which is okay. Time. But I like the fact that he asked for her name, right? They exchange names. Names are really hard because what I find is one third of all daters forget the date's name. Get out. Yes, yeah. by the end. Really? And the last thing you want to say is oh, at the end is, Can I get your number? Uh oh, what's your, your name? name. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now Susan, let's talk about the approach first. It's the hug right away, and then the handshake, which can be a little awkward. So how do you That's approach? That's like wearing suspenders in your yeah. belt. <laughs> well, the thing is that what happened was they came the close, and it was this all of a sudden this attraction, and all of a sudden, we're too close, and they kind of back up and then bring their hand out. Right. So it was too much, too soon at the very beginning. And their defense, you know, they've got cameras following. Sure, it, so, right. you know, it, it also seemed like Quan kind of took control. He did uh, very quickly. He did, and I think it was because he was nervous, right? And he mm -hmm. wants to immediately set an example and he wants to show that he's confident because we know that confidence is sexy. Okay, now now what about the actual date itself and the location? A park seems like sort of a very neutral, good fun place. Is location important when it comes to choosing how you're going to establish that connection? Susan? That's really true because we're talking about proxemic. So I really like this scenery because we're kind of dealing with all the senses. It was an open area and there was a lot of scenery around it so it didn't really increase any sort of anxiety. So those little places like in the restaurant way in the corner where mm -hmm. we're going to kind of build that romance right. at the very beginning way too much increases anxiety and stress not a good idea plus you can make a getaway from the park <laughs> there you go you can always run really fast you can that, yeah. that you can although that. like stretching out laying out on a blanket is that a little too much for a first date well here go ahead yeah, i was gonna say you know what not really not for a first date here's the thing is that we're doing connect activity four. Four. connect <laughs> four bro it doesn't get better than connect four i mean come on you could have brought battleship the last time you oh you know what four. i love battleships <laughs> So here's the thing, is that they were doing activities. I love activities yeah. because activity. see, when you are on a date and it's just a dinner, that's an interrogation, mm -hmm. right? This, we get a chance to see activities and we get a chance to see values play out. That's the most important. I mean, that's, yeah. Some of the conversation, I mm -hmm. thought, when he said something about, like, when they pair us up and then, you know, we're supposed to leave your boyfriend and girlfriend, does that create sort of an expectation that, you know, maybe... You know, not fair. <laughs> yeah, so you know, you never really want to talk about other people anyway right. on your date. But here's the other thing I'd like to bring Benji to is there, they weren't mirroring each other's body language. So we had one that's kind of sprawled out, ready to go, and the other was kind of like, oh, I'm not really quite sure. And she's kind of putting a little damsel in distress. So we have to also make sure that we're kind of being cognizant of the other person's body language and adjust our So to should that. he have mirrored her? He should have mirrored her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Here's, another, oh, go, go here's what I was going to say is, you know what, even if they didn't hit it off and have mm -hmm. a romantic match, at least they could be friends, right? Yeah. Expanding social circle is very important. We need more friends. Not nothing well, wrong with that. Look like yes. they were having a good time, yeah. though. So hopefully, it's a little something, a little spark there. We'll see. We'll Paul Carrick Brunson and Susan Constantine. Thank you both. And tomorrow, we're going to tell you about the secret to finding success.